Hey guys, uh, welcome to, uh, let me make sure I just actually started recording. Okay, I did. Awesome. Hey guys, welcome to, uh, another episode. This is the first ever time I've made a second episode of something, uh, of Minecraft talk, but again. So, in this episode, I really want to talk about the criticisms I have of the I'll try not to explain what I meant because when I was saying much sense. How difficult to to gauge how much people like actually understand like I was trying to say you see on videos. This you know oh, I'm just playing. But it's like it's really difficult to gauge that because when nobody's watching the videos I mean, how, how are you supposed to know? Man, these sheeps are really loud. They kind of... kind of sucks. Um... How many blocks I got? One, two... Three. So two more blocks. Bam. Bam. Oh. <laughs> okay. Wait, I should probably go back all of a sudden just in case. Um... Okay, so what I'm, what I'm trying to say is... Security Breach is one of my favorite games of all time, especially in the Finance Fray series. I mean, obviously, it's not going to be like Portal or, you know, Minecraft even. Not that Minecraft's bad, but like even Minecraft, you know, like just because, you know, it's it's a good game, but like not that good. Sorry, my dog just sneezed. Again, no idea if you heard that, but, you know, and it's like most of the flaws with the game we're gonna we're gonna uh turn that down the passive animal sounds is just too much uh most of the yeah friendly creatures sit down like the 25 perfect you know we'll even turn down we'll even turn on subtitles bam so you know, again, it's not an issue with the show, or not the, jeez, I'm sorry, I'm thinking about Euphoria. Uh, it's not an issue with the game, it's an issue with me, like, whenever I think about the game. It's stuff like, in the game, Gregory is not really a very likable protagonist. Here, we're gonna have to go four blocks out from everything. We'll have to get another trapdoor too. Uh, you know, I mean, stuff like in the game, canonically, Gregory. You know, it's never really established why Gregory's there, how Gregory got there, you know, like what his purpose is. You know, because obviously he climbed into Freddy for a reason, right? Was he kidnapped by Vanny and was trying to escape Vanessa? Oh, okay, I go, that's interesting. But it's it's never established. You know, you know, yesterday I was talking about how like my issues with like the way that they treat their the antagonist animatronics and really the lack of like acknowledgement. Cause it's not like we really even talk about them. You know, it's kinda like, oh man, look at them, they're there. It's not like yo. Uh, like, here's this characterization of them. No, it's just kind of, yep, they are, in fact, here. Yeah, you know, it's like, they're the enemies. And then, it's stuff like the game just doesn't really make sense. You know, with, like, the original, like... One of my main f issues with Five Nights at Freddy's 3 is every single time you get jump-scared by Balloon Boy... So, okay, so if you think of this, whenever you're playing the Five Nights at Freddy's games, the games are all about tension. You are tense because the lose condition, the one way that you can lose Five Nights at Freddy's is, or the only way you can, like, you'll ever end, is if you get jump scared. It, you know, I mean, even in Five Nights at Freddy's 3, that's the only way that your character, like, you lose, you know, quote-unquote, I'm using quotations, because you don't, like, technically, like, I mean, it's not like, 
game over. You had to restart. But, you know, you had to restart the night and everything. But the issue is, is that... So every single second that passes and, you know, like if you're playing Final Fantasy Phrase 1 and you, like, shut Bonnie out, you know, like, oh my gosh. And then you watch his power slowly drains. It's building up this tension. And then in Five Nights at Freddy's 3, attention is immediately released. Uh, boom. Jump scared by Phantom Balloon Boy. And oh my god, dude, it's terrifying the first couple of times. You're confused, disoriented, which is great because that's what it's going for. The issue is it doesn't stay like that, you know? It's not like, oh, the next time you get scared, like, jump scared by Balloon Boy. Because then you already have a fundamental understanding of, like, oh, okay, this is how Balloon Boy works. Uh, you know, and you compare that to, like, oh, you didn't shut the door on Freddy. Or, you know, you're playing I just phrase, and, you know, Freddy's basically, like, at the door. You open the cameras without turning off, or without shutting the door. Meaning that Freddy comes in and kills you. You made a mistake. And again, like, oh, yeah, but you made a mistake with Balloon Boy, but it's not a game-ending mistake. It's it's an inconvenience at most. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Yep. Yep, all right, perfect. Then you you might be asking yourself, Alex, why are you talking about Final Fantasy Phrase 3? I thought you were talking about Security Breach. And the issue is, is there are these characters called Security Bots in Final Fantasy Phrase Security Breach. These are the worst things in the entire game. Throughout my entire playthrough, they cause nothing but trouble. Oh, but well, I mean, that's not kind of the point. They're in the obstacles. No, because they don't make any sense. So, Vanny has them hacked, right? Hacked enough so that way they'll tear apart Freddy. Which, in theory, should go against their programming. Because, why would they kill something like that? But, you know, wh whatever. You know, there's n we're not going to question it, basically. And... This happens. It's never really, like, addressed. But... Why do they, like, why do they not kill you? Other than, well, gameplay reasons, Alex. I can accept that. That makes sense. Will you take full damage from there? But, still, the idea that, like, I'm supposed to believe, I don't really like that. Hmm. It didn't really make any sense to close it off because I want to get. Uh, we'll be fine, actually. Do I have another trap door? Yes, I do. But no, no, no. But like, what I'm trying to say is the issue comes from the fact that they have no reason not to kill you. With the fam animatronics, okay, they're they're fans. Like, like, what do you expect, man? For them to, like, kill you? Because, no, that's obviously not how fans work. Fans work. Okay, sure, I, I can accept that. Again, the issue comes in whenever you start applying stuff like, oh, okay, um, the animatronics teleport to you. And I get it. This is just laziness on Steel Wolves part. And not, like, laziness, but, like, oh, this game is clearly rushed, you know. So, like, yes, technically laziness, but not in, like, not the laziness that's like, oh, man, they just didn't care about the game. No, I, I believe they cared. I like to believe they cared. But kind of laziness that, like, okay, we need to make the game more difficult, but we only have four animatronics. We can't create, like, Gigamonty, which if you don't know what that is, you should look it up. It's not, like, SFW or anything. It's... A great video by this uh, Five Nights at Freddy's speedrunner named Astral Spiff. Absolutely banger. Definitely go check that out. Uh, dude, so many broken pickaxes. Um, we will uh, do this too. Just get it out of the way. Um, but you know, it's like you can't have Giga Monty because then the game will be too hard. And of course, in the more child-friendly direction they're going with. And rather you like that direction or not, that is where Five Nights at Freddy's is headed. That's where indie horror is headed, let's be honest here. 
you know, it's like, you can't have a game that's like, you know, a gigamonty chasing you. Like, they always know where you are, you know. Because then, okay, then just get rid of hiding spots, too. Because you're supposed to tell me that, like, I don't know, man. It's it's a tough one. I, I'm not going to pretend to be blind to it. But, like, oh, well, I mean, there's clearly a perfect answer. Because there isn't, you know. It's like, the game has flaws that there's no real way to counter without just saying F it, you know? Because there's no way you're going to be able to counter the idea that, oh, yeah, well, I mean, you can observe that, you know, like, this is clearly what they should have done, because there is no correct answer. It's no just, uh, what do you call it? Conjecture. Conject. Conjection, maybe? I don't know. You guys know what I mean. You know, and again, it's like, ah, uh, it's not necessarily a bad thing. I understand where that's coming from. But the point is, is it, that's what it is. <laughs> that is what it causes. You know, that's its that's its main cause. And it's like... You know, you kind of have to deal with that, man. Because you can't make the animatronics teleport, and then you jump up somewhere high, and then they just have no idea what to do. Like, it's over for them. You know, it's like, what? I, really, the issue kind of stems from why were they able to teleport in the first place? That doesn't really make any sense. Are they haunted? Are they not? You know, because it's like, hmm. And, you know, that's not even the worst part for me because, oh, if they just alerted, sure. But they jump scare you, you know, they grab you. And it's not really a jump scare anymore, but, you know, I don't I don't have the heart to tell Stu all that. Because, obviously, a jump scare needs to be unexpected. And if you see a security bot coming, sometimes it's unexpected. Like, some of the scariest scares come from the security bots. Now, I'm not talking about map bot either. I'm talking literally about them. Like, I'm just playing the game, walking... And rah, and I'm like, ah. That's exactly how it goes, by the way, in case you're curious. Um, you know, and it's like, you have to find a way to counter that. You know, it's, that's an issue with the game that they're probably not going to address. They're already teasing the DLC. And it seems that it's going to be at a theme park, which I'm not against. It sounds cool. The issue is, the Pizzaplex was one of the most buggy experiences I've ever had in gaming. And you're telling me that immediately they're going to start working on a brand new area with presumably even more like out-of-bounds glitches, uh, exploits. Really, like, that's, that's, that's what we're going to do, not expand on the Pizzaplex. Pizza Flex is one of the most interesting things in Five Nights Phrase for me right now. Because it's like, whoa, this is, you know, because it reminds me so much of, like, Chuck E. Cheese, you know? I'm sure that's what they're going for, but, you know, it's like, kind of this theme park game, or, like, thing. And it's like, whoa, okay, that's really cool. But, you know, it's like, who knows? You know, who knows the future? How is this DLC going to be applied? Wh what ending is it going to take place after? I'm still a big believer in the uh, canon ending is not canon. I'm a much... I like to believe that the... Uh, I forget... I, dude, I can't remember what it's called, I'll be real. The one ending with uh, Vanessa being freed by Gregory is canon comparatively because that's so much better dude you can get over the uh the spring tr or william afton we you know we can all kind of just pretend that it didn't happen you know we can let them live this one down right i don't think it's gonna happen but i don't know from what i understand scott had a pretty big part in writing this game so I don't think it's Steel Wolves' fault, but I think that 
the game doesn't tr like finance phrase doesn't really transition to open worldness very well, so it's more of an issue that you know they gotta work out. They have to stop bringing William Afton back. He is one of my least favorite parts about the game. I love this game. It's a great game, but it's it's, it's a bad part. <laughs> Anyways, on to the next thing. The lack of, like, cohesive story really sucks. Like, really sucks. Because the story isn't, oh, Gregory's trying to escape. It's like, oh, he's a captured kid. But he never talks about it. Like, do you know why the Bite of 87 became so incredibly popular? Because, so, you know, we can really get into this. Finance of Phrase 1 comes out. Bam. This game is terrifying. It's not like anything we've really seen from the horror industry. You know, since. Like, actually. Except for, like, Finance of Phrase fan games. But even then, they can't really capture the atmosphere for me. But it's like... Boom. There we go. Already, like, this terrifying issue comes through. And it's like, okay, well... You know... You then the only like real comfort you have is phone guy. Phone guy, who you know, a man's phone guy. It's not like he's the most comforting thing ever. It's you know, but he's the only thing that you have. He's your only lifeline reminding you that you're still human. You know, and I know that's being a little bit overdramatic, but come on, let me let me get my video essay on, please. I beg. I'm out of blocks. Cool. Um, and it's like, then phone guy tells you all about this bite. We used to let them walk around, which is what, he starts this by, you know, we let them roam around at night, though they used to roam around in the day, and at this point, you are terrified. Because I believe before this, he says like, oh yeah, they might think, they might, oh. I'm so sorry, I just hit the microphone. They, I believe right before he says this... Actually, can I hurt my hand? I won't be a baby. I'll be a big boy. Right before this, he said... Um... Oh, yeah. Don't mind if they walk around a little bit. Just don't let them come into your office. So you're you're on guard at me. Now. Like, what? Walk, come into my office? It's the only safe place I have. You know, it's like, you don't want this to happen. So... You know, there's your big issue. And then, he starts talking about how the, uh, they walk around, they used to walk around during the day. What? That's even more scary. These killer robots walking around in, during the day? Like, what, think of the children moment, you know? So, wow, okay, that's scary. And then he says, that was until the bite of 87. What? A bite? So now you're terrified. But the thing is, is the bite of 87 wasn't like, oh, it's hidden in this, you know, you have to read this lore. And I get like, oh, well, I mean, that's just how, like, you know, you can't just shove lore behind people's face. I get that, you know, the game is built on mystery, too, but one of the best parts of the mystery was is that they got you a hook, and the game doesn't explore the hook. It's just like, yeah, I'm Gregory, I crawled inside of you. We, then we don't build on that. They don't ever have a conversation about why he was even in the pizza plex. Oh, well, Gregory, uh, you don't have a profile, okay? And then we never address that. We never talk about that. It, it, you know, and again, it's like, well, I mean, yeah, it's you're like, what do you, the game can't, like, spell it all out for you. That's the thing. The game needs to spell out, like, some of it. Because <laughs> that's what the game does. That's what the game is supposed to do. Oh, I already had a 64. I was very confused. I was like, how do I have so little? That's what the game is supposed to do. It's supposed to get you invested in the main, in the overall story, so that way you are inspired to look around and try and cover more. 
Because there's no real point to... You know, like, oh man, this game is so scary. And then just... Okay. Okay, boss. <laughs> you know? Like, what? But... You're actively trying to pursue... Pursue, I just wasted a cobblestone. That's fine. That's fine. Um, we'll put them in here. You know, but then it's like you're given this choice of... You know, do... Crap. I have no idea what I was saying. I'm sorry. No, but the entire game... The game's purpose... The reason why Five Nights at Freddy's blew up is because... Oh, people started to get really invested in the lore. Alright, cool. Why'd people get invested in the lore? Stuff like... It, was that the bite of 87? Only became super popular because people remembered watching Five Nights at Freddy's. And specifically, watching that first Five Nights at Freddy's Let's Play and hearing about this bite of 87. This became this huge thing with like a year of build-up for fans. You know, and it's... That's the way it was. And whenever... And then we kind of get that with like, oh man, is... Well, you know, what is Gregory doing here? <sighs> but I feel like it just doesn't do it to the same extent. You know? Because they never really talk about it again. And I guess like, Phone Guy never mentions the Bite of 87 again. But it's like, it's... I think that's... I think that's just a better hook. Oh, Gregory, why are you here? And then we have Gregory, like, be talking, and then it's just never addressed again. You know? Like, a lot of it can be inferred. The more you learn about the game, like, oh, it's probably Vanny grabbed him, took him there. That's why he doesn't have, a, you know, ID. Oh, he's probably homeless because, you know, he's homeless in one of the endings. So nobody would have missed him, despite the fact that a homeless child is... Pretty unlikely, unless the game is set in, like, Los Angeles or something, you know? And I'm not saying that, like, homeless children can't exist, but it's more so, like, statistically, the idea of a child being homeless, not being picked up by anyone, is pretty unlikely. But, I mean, even then, this is, like, it's just not interesting enough. Oh, why is Vanessa recruit? Who cares? Vanessa doesn't do anything. Vanessa, the most Vanessa does, like, actually, is, aw, oh, um, Gregory, I've trapped you in this storeroom. Here, take this uh, screwdriver. It's going to actively help you do more stuff. Like, she only, what? What? And then, oh, then Vanny comes, and she's gonna get you. Uh, okay. It's like, the most interesting part about Vanessa is, is she actually Vanny? Well, yeah, Alex, of course she's Vanny, but what about the VIP ending? What about the fire exit ending? Where, there's another one. Oh, well, that's supposed to be your ghost. Are you sure? Really? What? The, the ghost? A, a ghost? Are you, are you kidding me? And again, I mean, oh, well, why can you accept, like, the crying child ghost? Because it's like, that makes sense! <laughs> I mean, it doesn't make sense, but, like... Really, what they should have done is if they wanted that to be Vanny's... Or if they wanted that to be Vanessa's ghost, have it look like the crying child's ghost, okay? Have it be grayed out. No tear stains, because then that would call into confusion the idea of maybe the crying child being Vanessa... Which would be awful. Um, but, you know, have it be gray to further, like, correct the idea that this is supposed to be a ghost. Rather than, oh no. I mean, maybe. I mean, that's just a few of them. Like, if you look through a lot of the text, there's one message in particular where it's talking about how, you know, Vanessa was especially recommended for this job. Despite having no experience, which is, you know, not good. Because, <laughs> obviously not. So. You know, I mean, what's that about? Oh, wait, it, you know, it doesn't ever come up within the actual plot, so it doesn't end up mattering. Hmm. If you'll notice, that's a theme with this game. 
where something interesting is suggested and then never really gets talked about, like Glamrock Bonnie. We have some dialogue from Freddy about Glamrock Bonnie, which made him a community favorite, because of course, why not? But do we ever get to find out what happened to Glamrock Bonnie? No. The most we get is a suggestion that Monty killed him. Huh? <laughs> what? I mean, Monty's, like, bad, but, like, he would kill Glamrock Bonnie? Are you joking me? Why would he do this? That doesn't make any sense. Do, do Are the animatronics jealous? Just how, like, real is this? Like, how many, like, do they feel emotions? Gr like, Freddy never has any reaction to the shattered animatronics. It's like, dude, does Freddy just not care? Freddy only ever shows two emotions. Exceeding disappointment? Or pride. Those are, those are Freddy's emotions. There's never like any middle ground where he's conflicted. Because obviously he cares about Gregory. Mm, okay. But he doesn't care about any of the other animatronics? But then he does. It's like, you, Freddy, you gotta, you gotta like show some more emotion other than... Yeah, I mean, don't do it, please. Oh, you did? Okay. Okay, boss. Like, come on, man. Have some backbone. No, you're not. But, you know. I think... I think I'm kind of exhausted talking about Scary Reach. At least for a hot minute. I'd like to do a full-on, like, rewrite of Security Reach at one point. But that would require, like, actual effort. Because I don't really want to, like, rant about that. I mean, I do want to rant about it. But it's, like, ranting about stuff is a lot more fun Whenever I don't have a solid <coughs> end point. Because, you know, it's like... Yeah, you know, I mean, we can talk about how I would change things. Like, I would make Vanessa be a bigger part of the game. I would make the game longer. I would do this. I would do that. Where it's like... Well, I mean, yeah, I'm sure that they would have too. You know, but whenever you run out of time, you can't... You know, it's like, at a certain point, people are going to have to accept that Scary Reach was rushed and didn't have enough time to finish its overall plot. Again, I'm not defending the game. I'm not saying, oh, this is, I, like, I think this is a fine thing. But it's like, this is the truth. This is the truth of the matter. Rather you like it or not, does not matter. Because this is, like, you, you're going to have to move forward knowing this. You know, and eventually people are just going to have to get over it. Like, either stop being a fan of the series, or get over it. You know, and again, I'm, I'm not saying, like, oh, people should give up on the series just because of this game was kind of lacking. But I'm saying that people are going to have to accept that the game is, you know, flawed. And that... It sucks, it really does, but the game is just not that great, <laughs> you know, and it's like, yeah, oh, but that's, you know, I mean, that's a sad, that's the sad reality, you know, it's like, oh, but it's the game's fault, well, I don't care about that, because that's not, that's not the point, you know, it doesn't matter that the game has... I mean, major flaws with the way characters are written, the lack of writing for certain characters, and, you know, how dynamic and undynamic certain characters are. You know, how boring some sections are, how short the exciting sections are. Some of the, some of the fan favorite characters from this game were Sun and Moon. I'm not, I'm not gonna pretend that, oh, Steel Wolf should have known this, but it's like, really, in a fan base of children, you don't think that the eccentric son would be popular? And then the 
baby moon because oh he's so depressed he's a baby you know it's like again but you know, whatever but th th one, that in my opinion that was one of the best sections in the entire game terrifying but you know also quick objective based but you could have done more with it you should have done more with it and you know now it's for that's forever gonna be like oh dude look at how cool this could have been you know again i think that they could have made the game so much longer, given birth to so many more great character interactions, if you just started making the, like, you only ever go to the daycare, inside the daycare once, you never return there. The most you return to Rockstar Road, or Row, is either getting around, or leaving the maintenance place. That's it. You have no reason to go back there. Because the one thing that you need, which is the, like, dance... Or I think it's the dance bath. No, it's not the dance bath. But the one the thing that you need, the, the, like, party pass or something from Chica's room, you find out you need immediately after doing a Freddy upgrade. So it's not like you ever have to make a conscious choice to go back there, you know? It's like, there's no real point to it. Again, this is a small flaw comparatively. It's not like game breaking, you know. The game is just no no sort of recovery. Like this game is garbage now. But it's like this is a flaw. A genuine flaw in the game. One that isn't like oh like I just said, isn't game breaking, but is one that's like worthy of discussion. So, I mean, that's just my two cents. But, you know, it's like... This really difficult thing to talk about. Because Security Breach, I just kind of that special place in my heart as one of my favorite Five Nights at Freddy's games. But it's never... It's a flawed game. You know I mean, that's, that's how it is. The issue with flawed games... Is that they're flawed. They have things where you just sometimes have to admit, man, you know, this really could have been expanded upon. And, you know, I mean, it's like, yeah, it sucks, but still, you're gonna have to get over it eventually. So, 64 divided by 3. So, you should need 27 bookshelves, I wanna say. 27 times 3 is 80 no no wait wait yes 81 boom solved it and 81 books times three again is 108 which is 64 and 44 so, we already have most of the paper. Here, let's just... 18, we need 27 bookshelves. Which means we need three books each. So, really what we should do is do that. Yeah, that's what we'll do. Perfect. Because we need... Three books each, here are the bookshelves. Alright. Anyways, you know, like, you understand what I'm trying to say, though, right? That. Oh, that's perfect. That's actually perfect. <sighs> Let's go. Um, that you know the game is flawed, but I love it regardless. I mean, that's just how I am. So we need a little over sixty-four. Oh, I made too much paper. That's fine though. 
You know, but I think that addressing the flaws of a, of a game that you love is an integral part of playing the said game. And, you know, I mean, that, you know, maybe that opinion's wrong, but that's the one I have, right? And, you know, that's just kind of the way it is. We're going to chill in this cow pen for a minute. Uh, oh, wait, I want to get that. Hey, all that hacks. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just... It's difficult, because I know that Scary Reach is a good game, in my heart of hearts, but I think the game is just riddled with bugs, and again, I'm, they just recently released a patch, so it's like, hopefully a lot of them are fixed, but that's always, it's always going to be a sour mark on it, and even though I think that some of those bugs, like Gigamonty, are some of the coolest bugs ever, I love Gigamonty. Gigamonty is amazing. It's just stuff like... It's stuff like the writing, although hilarious, is very flawed in that it doesn't give you a very cohesive plot to follow because the game is much more linear than the rest of Five Nights at Freddy's. Which sounds, you know, funny because it's like, well, that doesn't really make any sense because one of the games where the only thing you could do was survive, be more linear. But what I mean by that is that the game has to be more linear. Because other than like, oh, we'll go here to do the next objective, there's no real, like, setup for William Afton coming back. There's no real setup for Vanny. There's no real setup for Vanessa. You have these three main antagonists. And Vanessa hardly feels like a character. Vanny isn't a character. Vanny is at most a moving wall. Whenever you shatter Chica. And a major boring enemy. Whenever you get the screwdriver. She does. The, she basically is Glamrock Chica. But Glamrock Chica is good. <laughs> like literally that's what she does and spoiler alert that's not a good thing I mean at least in my opinion it's not a good thing okay yeah, so it's, 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 oh man. And then William, don't even get me started on Burn Trap. I hate Burn Trap. I really do. Because Burn Trap is lazy, right? Burn Trap is so lazy. William Afton was genius on Scott Cawthon's part. Oh, he's the killer. He's the bad guy. He's why these animatronics are acting up. You know, because then it's not like, oh, the animatronics are just evil for no reason. Which then kind of remains like you can get the soft side from it, and that really appeases the fan base. But I mean, it also tells like a gritty story about this like rundown pizza place with a killer problem, you know? It's like, okay, you can get behind that. Then Five Nights Phrase 2 builds on that. It builds on William Afton. It details his crimes. It details why the animatronics are haunted. Yeah, right? And then awesome that's really really good five nights of phrase three this is the climax as you play through this game you realize oh my gosh purple guy is springtrap so this conclusion that this person like this anime trying that you've been hunting down this disfigured disgusting dingy animatronic is the murderer from the first two games what? And then you get the bad ending, and then you're like, hmm. And you go back and you look at the mini games, and you're like, oh wait, maybe. And then you find the secret mini games, and then you find the secret endings to the secret mini games, and you're like, what? What? And it tells the story about the spirits finally letting go. And then Five Nights at Freddy's ro fours, Four rolls around. Five Nights at Freddy's Four is the prequel, in my opinion. You know, it's not really like the prequel, but it's like. It's about the rise of it, you know, like the beginning with the nightmare animatronics, you know, 
but then it also kind of hints at stuff like Five Nights at Freddy's 2 being a, like a nightmare, which I really want to talk about because that would be so cool. So, so, so cool. Again, that one requires some more complex thought, so I'd have to have like an actual like detailed list of what I'd want to talk about. So that way I wouldn't literally just be babbling. And then, of course, you eventually have stuff like Five Nights, and then Sister Location comes out. And at this point, you're like, hmm, okay, I'm not so sure anymore, because Five Nights Phrase 4 was supposed to be the last one. And then Sister Location is entirely different. It's story-based this time. It's it's not, you know, it's not all about, you know, and, and before this, this was FNAF World. So, you know, you're kind of sitting on the edge of your seat, like... Is this really going to be very good, especially after that? And then you play this intense story-based game where you, you know, slowly grow to have an actual opinion on all these animatronics. Because the, for the first time, they're voiced, and you get to see them and how they interact with one another, and you begin to have, like, fan-favorite animatronics. But then this inner character shows up. The scooping room. Hmm, what's this about? And the game ultimately climaxes with you dying. Your character dies. What? And of course, you can find the secret with Innard, but eventually Innard does, you know, go and kill you and everything. But notably, like super notably, your, you know, it's like your character dies. And then ultimate, then the custom night drops. Custom night is brand new, all sorts of new animatronics. It's great, absolutely wonderful. And you're watching, and then you beat Golden Freddy mode, er, and then you know you're watching these cutscenes, and it's basically your character Michael Afton, who we know at this point, slowly breaking down, and you're kind of left wondering, hmm, what's happening here? And then the truth reveals itself. The inner is in your character. You know, that's what's happening. And you're like, what? As your character coughs up entered. But then you go on and you're like, oh my gosh. And then you get William Afton sitting up after beating Golden Freddy mode, because that's what I think it's called. And you're like, wow, that's crazy. And I don't really remember why I talked about this, but, you know, we're going to finish, and then that'll be the end of the video. Thank you guys for watching, but I'm not done yet, so just stay here. But, you know, you're going, and you're like, man, this can't get any more crazy. And then, bada boy, Five Nights at Freddy's 6 drops. Oh my gosh, what even is this? What? It's a family-friendly Five Nights at Freddy's game? Okay, so it's like FNAF World again, right? Wait, why is it glitching? Oh my god. What? What is this? Is that, is that, is that like, is that baby? What? 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 And then you die, and you're like, huh? And then Five Nights at Freddy's Pizzeria Simulator happens. And you're like, wow, that was really, really good. You play through, and... You know, eventually you get the the good ending, right? Where you have all the animatronics in the building, you you know, you survive, and then it's like, bam. I have a feeling some of you might not want to leave, and you see all of these animatronics, you know, you see Scrap Trap, you see Scrap Baby, uh, Molten Freddy, and then Lefty. All of these main antagonists of the, the entire series slowly melt away with you at its helm. And you're left thinking, man, what a great series. And Five Nights at Freddy's Ultimate Custom Night gets announced. And you're like, wow. Scott says, 50 characters, all of them have unique mechanics. And you're, and you're, I mean, you're left wondering, like, what? Can this game get any crazier? And it comes out. And... Yeah, I mean, the theories drop. It's purgatory. This is the end. This is the epilogue for Five Nights at Freddy's. This is William Afton's eternal suffering. And then that that's Five Nights at Freddy's. That is what Five Nights at Freddy's will always be. 
right? Finance of Freddy's, oh, yeah, but, you know, what about Help Wanted? You know, what about Glitch Trap? Because William Afton comes back, and it's like, no. This is, this is new Five Nights at Freddy's. This is new age stuff. This is like the, this is like, you know, God, this is the only one I can think of. I swear to God, I'm not a brony, but... Like, the My Little Pony show reboot. You know, it's, it's a different show, from what I understand. I just swear to God, do not watch it. But, you know, it's like, it's a different show. It's, it's similar. You know what I mean? It shares characters, but it's completely different. Uh, I actually, I actually want to recant that statement because it doesn't make any sense. Because, from what I understand, My Little Pony show or My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, and the original My Little Pony are basically the same. So I guess a better example might be, uh, Modern Warfare. I mean, very, very similar, but different story, you know? As I really cannot think of very many reboots, but there's a lot. You know? Or, oh, oh no, I just thought of the best one. So, Powerpuff Girls reboot came out like 2018, 2019. I have no, it did not come out though, those years. What it came out like 2016? It's a very, it's been a very long time. But this show comes out and it's like, hmm, okay, well, it's fine, I guess. But you know, I mean, it's nothing entirely original, but it's still you reuse his characters and everything. So, it's like that's my thought process on it. You know, the Steel Wool games are canon, I won't deny that, but. They're not canon in my heart. You know, I know that sounds stupid, but that's how I feel. Thank you guys so much for watching. This concludes uh, Minecraft and Talk Episode 2. I, uh, this, I could really get behind this. This is perfect. This is perfect. I still want to do stuff like Play Portal, but, uh, you know, I mean, do other stuff. But that's going to be a lot more, like, gameplay focused. You know, I still want to play, like, getting over it, all that good stuff, you know. I, I have some stuff in the, I have some stuff in the works. Don't worry. It's gonna be late when this video comes out again. Uh, during the week, maybe I'll get on track this weekend and really start to, like, grind on, uh, you know, like, actually getting, you know, stuff made for this channel it would go live at certain times you know but i love you guys thank you for watching please subscribe i won't have such a long rant at the end like i did last time goodbye